Hello, and thank you for joining us here on the Neutral Zone. I am Phil Milani, joined as always by my esteemed colleague, my partner in crime. Really, the best way to describe this person is my everything. It's at Eric Dalala. Phil, what's up with you? Eric, it's good to be here with you at Breckenridge Brewery's Farm Home. That's right. We're in Littleton, off of Santa Fe and Brewery Lane. We're here every Monday from 5.30 exactly to about 6.15. Fact check true. Fact check true. And we're talking about the Broncos uh, game against the Chiefs. Eric, uh, a 34-28 loss, but there was a lot to dissect, a lot to get into here. Uh, obviously, uh, Russell Wilson, and his performance, got an update on uh, his status here uh, moving forward from Nathaniel Hackett today. We can talk about Jerry Judy three touchdowns against the Chiefs, and then, of course, Josie Jewell playing out of his mind right now. Two interceptions, uh, so a lot to get to here, Eric, uh, but first, just uh, your general thoughts on yesterday's game. Yeah, Phil, I mean, it's we're sitting here, and we're almost, I don't want to say we're happy, but no, a lot to be encouraged about for the first time in, in quite a while, I would say, and uh, it all starts and ends with Russell Wilson and the offense, Phil. The Broncos fall behind 27 to nothing. Uh, Russell Wilson throws a pick six. It does not look pretty. bunch of three and outs. And then somehow, we've been waiting for this for 14 weeks, essentially. It clicks, and the Broncos score three touchdowns on three consecutive drives. They play complimentary football. They get a couple of takeaways. Uh, you mentioned Josie Jewell. Pat Sertan gets another one. And this team one, I thought, showed a, a toughness, a resiliency, where it would have been really easy down 27 nothing to, to pack it in and say, that's 14 in a row to the Chiefs. Let's get to next week against the Cardinals. They didn't do that. They fought back. They battled back. They made it a game. And then this offense, it, it showed the explosiveness. Russell Wilson, Russell Wilson showed the types of throws. He showed the running ability that, quite frankly, Phil, we've been, that's what we expected. That's what we thought we were going to get coming into this season. And for the first time in quite a while, I, I think you look at this offense and you say, that's what it could be like that's good enough to to win a lot of football games even though the broncos did not win yesterday yeah 28 points uh that was a good performance there they scored 21 unanswered in less than four minutes of game time which uh w was really just a, a a burst there for this team what where did that come from eric do you think it was just simply josie jewel's interception do you think that the chiefs took their foot off the gas a little bit uh, what, what do you think? Why all of a sudden did things just explode like that? I, I think, if anything, the Chiefs were trying to be too aggressive. I think Andy Reid mentioned that after the game, that they wanted to keep their foot down. They wanted to keep attacking. Uh, Mahomes threw a couple of picks that he, after the game, was not happy with. He said he can't make those decisions. But that's what you're supposed to do if you're the opponent. You take advantage of those types of things. And the Broncos have struggled this year converting the few takeaways they've gotten into points, Phil. They did not struggle in this game, and I thought the explosive plays, like I mentioned, Russell Wilson uses his legs on that second touchdown drive, and then I'm sure we'll, we'll talk about him extensively, but Jerry Judy was the type of guy that we've hoped he could be, and, you know, the Chiefs tried doubling him at times. They tried holding him at times. They simply could not stop him, particularly when the Broncos were in tight, close to the red zone. I mean, that's a guy that you look at and you say, okay, he's a top 20 pick. He's the guy the Broncos thought they were getting when they drafted him in the first round a couple of years ago. Yeah, I mean, those are like the uh, – Jerry Judy and Russell Wilson, those are the two guys that were like, like – maybe sort of changed perceptions about them a little bit yesterday. Uh, let's start with Russ a little bit, though, first. I mean, the way that he played yesterday – the fight, the grit that he showed, the fact that he, on that third down and 11, was putting his body on the line. Of course, that ended up uh, landing him in concussion protocol, but uh, that's the kind of like um, com competitive spirit that I think teammates respond to. I know that the fan base certainly responded to that, too. Yeah, and listen, I, I think that that's the same spirit and the same attitude Russell Wilson has had all year. This means a lot to this guy. I mean, you saw, um, you know, against the Ravens, a few seconds left on the clock. He's trying to gain every yard. He takes a huge hit. I mean, he's earlier in the year against the Chargers. He's running around. The Raiders, he's got a bad hamstring. He's trying to make things happen. I mean, this this has been who this guy is all year round. He's always in the building. 
I just think that without results, Phil, it doesn't mean the same thing to a lot of people, particularly fans, for good reason. Uh, it doesn't necessarily matter, are you tough, are you laying it on the line? You have to do that and find success, too. And so the fact that in this game, Russell continued to show that, uh, you know, th- that competitive spirit, that willingness to lay it all out there, and the Broncos found success, like you mentioned, Three touchdowns, 21 unanswered points. They end the game on, what, a 28-7 to run. For them to do that and Russell Wilson at the same time show, hey, I'm going to put my body on the line for this team, I do think you're right. I think a lot of people last night and this morning, as they're looking back on it, probably feel a little bit differently about Russell Wilson and, you know, his future here, what they're what the Broncos are capable of accomplishing, all of that. But I don't think the effort just came out of nowhere. I think we've seen that all year. Yeah, but I guess uh, my question is, the the week before against the Ravens, really struggling out there as an offensive side. They don't even get into the red zone. They don't score a touchdown. And then it just seemed like things felt a little bit different after they got down 27 nothing. Uh, do you feel like, Eric, they were just able to just play a little bit more freely when they were down 27 nothing? Like, hey, we got nothing to lose here. Let's just go play football a little bit. Or do you think that schematically something changed i mean how did it just start working all of a sudden right well i just i want to separate the success from the effort because i I do i do think the effort's been there all year but yeah in terms of things working i think the broncos just didn't have a a choice you're down 27 nothing you've got to push the ball down the field you've got to go for it on fourth down you've got to take some chances um you, you know the broncos on the drive later in the fourth quarter where russ ends up getting hurt they go for it on fourth down and, what, five, six, somewhere around there, and throw up a deep one to Jerry Judy, who ends up getting interfered with to get a first down. I mean, they, they were forced into some of these decisions by the the nature of the game. But I also think that, you know, I don't know if it was the aggressive mentality, the hurry up, going a little quicker. I, I do think a lot of it ties back to Russell Wilson being able to use his legs. I mean, he ran four times for 50-something yards. That was by far, it nearly doubled his previous best. Yards per attempt were much higher, and so that's always been Russell's thing, right? Like, when he can get out of the pocket and move around and make some throws or take off, and the defense has to deal with that too, it, it just changes the complexion of a game. It changes what you have to worry about as a defense. I, I think we saw for maybe the first or maybe the second time this year, you know, a defense really have to worry about is Russell going to take off here is he going to run for this first down and uh, it obviously ended up working well for the Broncos yeah it's it's like I said this on uh, Broncos post game live a great show (laughs) one of my favorites I I said it's sort of like a double-edged sword though because it allows him to have a lot of success out there because he's putting pressure on opposing defenses with his legs but at the same time it's what knocked him out of the game you know, and uh, I do think that for this team to have success, he's got to be able to be that weapon with his legs. I do think that that gives Russ something that makes him Russ. I mean, that is sort of what makes him be special. It's kind of like the same thing when he dances around in the pocket back there. A lot of magic happens on those plays where he avoids a couple of sacks and then he throws a, a bomb down the field. But also sometimes it's a big sack and it kills momentum so i both of those things i think are like that's what makes russ russ like it's like big plays big big moments but also sometimes it it doesn't look great out there and i think yesterday when they were down 27 nothing even that that final uh, sequence that russ was out there it was second and forever yeah i mean it was it was i think 34 was it second and 34 or something yeah well he hits dulcich uh, for a big play, and then he takes off with his legs, and he knows where the marker is, and he dives for it. I mean, that those are what makes Russ special. I mean, those moments where he's able to do that. So uh, I agree with you, Eric. I think that more of that, and we'll find some success uh, on the offensive side. Yeah, I mean, with Russ, there's highs and lows, right? He's just this electric quarterback where he can make those plays. It's the same way with Mahomes. He's going to run around, and he's going to toss one underhand to Jarek McKinnon, and, and he's going to take off for a touchdown. And then he's going to try to fit one into Travis Kelsey, and it's going to be picked off. I mean, that's, same thing. it's the same type of deal. You see that with Josh Allen sometimes. Um, and, and so that's just part of it. And previously, for the first 10 years of his career, there was a lot more good than bad with yeah. Russ. And so you you kind of lived with some of those sacks. And so far, 
this season. We haven't seen as much as many of the big plays, but against the Chiefs, Phil, they got more of those big plays. They found a way. I, I will say with the running, it's about picking your spots, right? And on the read option, it's a third and one at the end of the first half. He picks up 13, 14 yards. He doesn't take a hit. There's yeah. another one. He gets down inside the red zone, doesn't take a hit. When it's when it's third and 11 and you're down two and scores you and you need it. a touchdown in the fourth quarter, that's a situation I'm okay with Russ diving forward. Yeah. And, you know, he does that 50 times. He's probably okay most of the time. This was a situation where he gets hit in the head as he's diving and then Frank Clark lands on him yeah. and essentially pushes his head into the ground. I mean, it was it was kind of a perfect storm where this happened, but I think Russ, is a, he's a vet in this league. He knows when to take hits and when not to take hits, but... You're right. The Broncos have to make this a part of what they do, especially when you don't have Tim Patrick or Cortland Sutton or K.J. Hamler. You know, your offensive line is, uh, you know, a hodgepodge right now. When you don't have an ideal circumstance, I think this running ability is something you can look to as, hey, it gives us a little bit of an edge when right now we don't, we don't have a lot of guys that are difference makers. I mean – not only am I okay with him taking that hit there, it fired me up. I was like, oh! I, like, stood up. I was that. I mean, that single play, I mean, changed a lot of uh, opinions, I think. You know, just that one play. But The effort has been there, I agree. But just the moment and the situation and the fact that he, it converted, right. you know, those those things uh, all together, I mean, it was that was a moment. It you was. know what I mean? It's not like uh, John Elway's helicopter. No. Do you know what I mean? But it was like a moment. You know what I mean? So yeah. I think that effort is fine and all, but if but you got to make the first down and th- those types of things, like, that's that's what I'm talking about. Yeah, and I, I agree with you for the most part. Like, that, you can look back on that maybe if this, if you start to get things going and the Broncos have future success and say, man, that, 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 was a that run moment, against I the Chiefs, him. Russ, you know, he earned a lot of people's trust or, you know, people, a lot of people's respect with that. Yeah. But I just look back and I, you know, the Ravens game again. He runs up. He takes a huge hit to get in field goal range. If McManus makes it doesn't that, matter. If McManus makes that kick, you're probably the next day talking about, wow, Russ took a huge hit to give him a chance yeah. to kick that. It just, you're right. There's a it matter, be, the, the success has to tie in it too. Has but to be there. yeah. But if you've been watching closely, you've been paying attention. You know, Russ has been putting his body on the line yeah. all year long. Yeah. But it's a results-oriented business. And uh, yesterday, it's not like the, all of this culminated in a win. So ult- the ultimate result actually still is not there. But uh, I do think that we saw some moments there where we felt like Russ still has it. He looked like Seattle Russ there for a while. Uh, uh, Eric, I'm wondering, do you think that this was a spark? This was a – I know that uh, we found – well, we heard today that Russ was feeling good. But his health is the number one priority. They're going to take things slowly, it sounds like, with Russ. They want to make sure that he's 100%, which obviously is the right way to go about this here. But I know there's only four games left, and we'll have to see how Russ progresses through the concussion protocol. But do you feel like this was something that will spark this team and we'll see more of this type of offense? I hope so, just because, and I think so, because it gives you belief as an offense that, you can do this. Greg Dulcich knows he can make these plays in big moments. Jerry Judy knows he's capable of going out and putting up a, a three-touchdown game. So th- those things are both very important. And I, and I just – maybe you found a momentum. Maybe you found, um, you know, this – maybe you've made this discovery that Russ and using his legs in this way is a, is a game changer. And so I, I do think that if he's able to get back out there this season, that's important and that – so if you can – I know you want wins here, and I do think getting a couple wins would go a long way, but even if you could just start scoring in the mid-20s and show this type of explosion, that to me would go a long way in the next season. And I think you'd even have to start thinking, you know, is this working in a way that we can move forward in this direction? But, um, yeah, I thought Russell Wilson's effort was really good. Obviously his best game of the season, and it's just it was such a fun game, too. Yeah. You know, there haven't been a lot of fun games this year. Yeah. This was fun to watch if you're a fan, and you almost feel a little bit robbed that you didn't get to see Russ go out there and try to win it. Yeah, you think they would have won? I, yes! I, <laughs> I think the Broncos would have scored again, yeah. and then I think it would have been up to the defense to get a stop. 
They, they definitely get a stop. And, man, can you imagine how loud that place would have been? Oh, it would have been rocking. Rocking. So just uh, it would, I think it would have been the biggest comeback in franchise history, the 27 points. Fact check? I, I Possibly believe that true. Is, I believe that that's true. I, the Broncos were down 24 nothing in that magical uh, Chargers game. Magical. Peyton Manning magic. Yep. Uh, but this, obviously, 27 points. I'm pretty sure that's why Russ threw that pick six. He was like, let's, let's make it so it's the record. You know, because a good point. 20 would not have been the record. No. So he's like, I want the record. You do the pick six. And, the, you know, people gave the defense a little bit of a hard time for giving up the, I think it was four and a half minutes that ran off the clock. Let's be clear here. After that touchdown, they got to stop. They forced a three and out, and then yeah. they got a pick. The Broncos' yeah. offense had two more chances. Two yeah, they had two chances in the third quarter to take the lead. I mean, the defense did its part. It's just twenty-seven points, Phil. There's a reason that teams don't come back from that. It's hard. Uh, ben Swanson. Yeah, that's our guy. We've just got a, a fast fact check here, and it's a good time to say that AP commented and said Benny Boy, the goat of NZ. Benny Boy, the goat of You mean he likes that or no? Yeah, of course he's blushing. Okay, yeah, these are the largest deficits in Broncos history. 24 points, October 15th, 2012. Comebacks. Beautiful. Comebacks. Deficit, and then the Broncos came back and won the game. Like, obviously, 27 was a higher deficit. Yeah, it's a higher deficit. That would have been the record. Right. I'm saying these are the largest deficits they faced to come back and win. Got it. You didn't say say the second part, but... Well, maybe if you would have let me continue. You, know, <laughs> you, were, already, just, uh, you were already you already point me. totals. You interrupted me. 24 points, uh, 1979 versus the Seahawks. Yep. Of you course, graduated I college. college. I, was, yep, I just finished up college there. Uh, that's against the Seahawks. And then uh, another 24 points, 1960, Eric. 1960, Eric, against the Patriots. So you were in high school. That's old, old hat. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, 27 points. Cool. So if you were the Broncos cool. this week, would you let the Cardinals go up 27 just to see if you could do it this time? Well, Russ isn't going to be out there. so You don't think so? Uh, I I would not play him this week. I, that's Got my it. personal. I guess I just sort of like revealed my personal <laughs> feelings about that. Uh, I just think that like if they're taking things slowly with him and they want to make sure he's safe, that looked like a pretty scary hit uh, on the field there. And uh I just feel like with safety and concussions and what we know now, you got to be safe and uh, cautious about these types of things. So, I also know, I knowing think. Russell Wilson, who, a- play. who after that hit was jogging to the tent, who <laughs> yeah. was trying to get his helmet. I mean, it, it's hard to keep this guy off the field. So yes, if he's healthy. For his, uh, right. If, but if he's deemed healthy enough to play, I know it's going to be hard to convince him not to be out there. Yes. Yes. Of course. Uh, Eric, uh, we've got a lot of questions here that we're going to get to here, but first I want to talk about Jerry Judy a little bit. Okay. Uh, it, Nathaniel Hackett said that he switched positions. He took Corlin Sutton's spot. He's, he's in the touchdown position now. He's now in the touchdown position, which you, you would think maybe he'd want to Maybe you would have done uh, that earlier. Yeah, do that earlier. But uh, three touchdowns. I uh, heard a lot about his uh, ability to create separation. I think Nathaniel Hackett probably talked about eight minutes of his 12-minute press conference talking about how Jerry Judy attacks man versus uh, zone. You don't like insightful he got answers? Up. He got fired up about I the learned football something. part of it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He, you, of he course, you, of up. course, know everything, so tough for you to learn something. It is. T- thank you for acknowledging From the back, that. you're like, I thank know you. this already. Thank you for acknowledging Hurry up. That. I was like, enough. <laughs> You're like, say some spicy stuff. Say something spicy. Oh, yeah, that's what I did. Yeah, blast somebody. Yeah, 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 yeah. I like that. Um, so what do you think about his performance? The the first, the ability to... Nathaniel Hackett at the press conference? Well, no, I know what you think about that. I think you stood up and gave him a round of applause. There's no cheering. You're in like, the... great answer, sir. There's no cheering in the press box. Yeah. This was not a press box. Press conference room, press box. Cr- press conference box. <laughs> yeah. That's it is in are. a room that's shaped like a box. Yeah. No windows. You say a room is shaped like a box or a box is shaped like a room? A room is shaped like a box. Yes, that Makes room is. Because some think. rooms are yeah. not shaped that way. There are more doors or windows? There's uh, one door. No, there's two doors in that room. Yeah. If, if that question were asked about yeah. that room, the answer would be doors. Doors. Because there's no windows. Correct. 
just darkness. <laughs> I thought Jerry Judy was really good. Well, yeah, I was going to say, first of all, to be able to just uh, move positions like that and then also to play the way he did. I mean, he obviously he got fired up there, uh, felt like he was getting held, uh, some frustrations being down 27 nothing. He had a conversation on the sideline with Nathaniel Hackett, obviously cannot bump into the ref the way he did. No. Did you say that was a bump? It was a bump. It's a bump, I think. He can't not do that, no. obviously. Jerry Judy said that after the game. Hey, he's got to be able to manage his emotions a little bit better. But it did seem like that frustration level boiled over, and it and it resulted in a, a one heck of a game the rest of the way for him. Well, it's kind of like you, you get ready in the morning. You're using the hair dryer. Uh-huh. It's not quite working the way you want. You, you, you start angry. throwing the hair dryer. I don't you throw, throw the hair You dryer. throw the product. You're I ups- always respect, you're upset. I you're respect upset. the hair dryer, but you're maybe upset. the brush. You bump the maybe brush. the brush, yeah. Maybe the brush yeah. takes some abuse. That's some good volume. That was not a problem today, apparently. Yeah. yeah. A little wow. bit of a quaff? What would you say? How, how would you say it? Wow. I don't know if I would say it's that. It's full. It's full. Yes. Voluptuous. Thank you. Thank you. Um, yeah, I thought that Jerry, well, one, switching position, some people may think, oh, what's the big deal? You're still running the same routes. No, it's a, you, you got to, everything plays off each other. And so when you're in a different spot, it's an entirely different set of routes you need to know. Um, if you're running option routes, you've got to key off different things. If you're playing against a zone, it, all these things are different. And so the fact that he did that this week, Kendall Hinton did it a few weeks ago, it is a big challenge. Um, so I, I think since Jerry Judy's been drafted, we've expected that he could have this Great sort of jobs. performance. We we hoped he could show this potential. We knew he is talented enough, but we just haven't seen it in a game. And obviously, three touchdowns all of this year. His season high in touchdowns was three. Then he goes out and matches that in one game. And it's just like, man, if Jerry Judy can find – obviously, he's not going to score three touchdowns every game. Why not? Well – I don't think that that'll happen. Maybe it'll happen. It's that'd be not really, obvious. Let's that'd just be really say it's nice. not obvious. Yeah. He, he maybe probably won't score three maybe touchdowns. Some people are saying he might some, not do that. Some people are saying. But if he can just be this top-level threat, you know, that defenses have to worry about, this Broncos offense becomes very different. And, Phil, I also think that your off-season needs list changes to some degree. We've talked about can you find an offensive guy that strikes fear into a defense. I I still think the Broncos need to add somebody, but if Jerry Judy can play like this, I think the the whole plan moving forward could be a little bit different. Maybe you don't have to go out and spend huge money on a free agent guy. Maybe you don't consider using a first-round pick on a guy. If Jerry Judy shows this consistently, and again, I like to talk about you've got to do it week after week. It cannot be you love talking about it that. cannot be one week and yeah, and then true. you disappear. But from what we saw yesterday, Phil, really encouraging and, and the same way that Russ changed perceptions, I, I think Judy probably did the same thing. Most definitely. I mean uh, he's battled a lot of injuries, so that sort of has been a part of his reputation. Last season it was uh, drops. Oh he, this that's become part of his uh, reputation. Yesterday he was on fire. Eric. Two years ago was the drops. Time, fl- two years time ago? flies when you're. Is it two years ago? Spending time at Breckenridge Brewery's farm home in Littleton. Uh, that kind of gets the Jake Hedges question here. A little Look bit. at all those questions. Jake Hedge says, "I heard these guys take six shots before they do an ep." Jake Hedges. Ep. Yeah, this is no just Jake Hedge. Oh, sorry. Jake Hedge. And then they uh, tr- they go live and uh, see who can last the longest without slurring. I just start making up facts. That's true. You know, that's what I I do that all you the don't, time. You don't make a lot of sense anyway. Yeah, so. exactly. Mario Gonzalez says, hi, geek team. Team, I think just one geek up here. Brutal. <laughs> geek team. Mario, geek team. That's... That's like, not very nice. Like we work at a, an That's electronics geek store. That's a geek well, squad. Well, I'm not going to say the name because not a sponsor. But no, of course not. But they could they, be. They could be. They could be. Eric, this might be a good time to mention that we are live at Breckenridge Brewery's Farm Home. That's right, Phil. We're here every Monday from exactly 5.30 to about 6.15. Yep. And uh, we're also live on the Broncos' official YouTube page. And while you're here, just go ahead and subscribe. Choo-choo-choo-choo-choo. Just so smash we- it. 
I, sh I should also mention we we advertised a contest. Oh, yes, we did. Oh, yeah, mention this. Mention it. Okay, can, should I do it now? Mention it. We advertised a contest it's to close. win one. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my gosh. You blew the big reveal. It's closed. That's it. That's all I got. You'll find no, out if you I'm win. I'm sorry. Please don't. No, we did a big contest to see who could win at $100 to the Broncos team store. The what would you do with that? Oh, my gosh. So many things. Yeah. I would ask first for $100, $1 Broncos team store gift cards just so I could really savor them. And then who knows? Uh, it's the winter months. Maybe a nice beanie. Little Susie. That's right. She's on the holiday list. Silly, little, silly Mike. Silly Mike. Funny Larry. <laughs> yeah. I mean, all you your, all your relatives, you got to help them out. Okay, so we did this contest. Yeah, so I'm, that we, it's closed now. We're going to draw the winner, and we will let you know soon. It will be sent out with all of the stickers that Phil is sending. I was going to say, this is a much different situation than the stickers. This is like, you're going to get this. Oh. So If you win. If you win. If you, you don't win, if you don't win, you will not get it. Yeah, no moral victories in this uh, contest. No, that's true. But if you if you maybe you did a lot of entries and you felt like you, you were felt close good about it, yeah, you're like next year I'm going to be ready for the end, all the entries. Right, you showed next, some toughness. Next year you're going to win the contest. You had three. You had three entries for the first time in your Broncos fandom. Yeah, yeah, to be nice. Uh, let's get a let's get another uh, few here. Um, Xavier Solorio, Solorio. I think yesterday's game just proves that Russ still has it in him, has it in him. Go Broncos! Hopefully next season we turn it around. And then in all caps says, "Let's ride." Wow, I do think Russ still has it, has it in him. That dog is he. That dog or the dog is still that dog in is him. in him. It's in him. He's that guy. He's him. Yeah, that's what the kids are telling us. That's Swanson, of course, very tuned in with. Yeah, Swanson told me trends. that he's him, and I was like, all right. He told us to say that he has that dog in him. Dog. How do you spell that kind of dog? D A W G. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Mark, I think this is this is probably helping the geek. The geek team. Mm Moniker, yeah, Metambale. Uh, What's good? That looked like an offense yesterday. That, that, that looked like an offense. Mark Horning, hey guys, gritty performance. Did anyone notice how much the offensive line was playing better after Natani Muti came in? Natani Muti, where has he been all my life? <laughs> what are you drinking over here? <laughs> This one, uh, a Christmas this is called a holiday ale. Holiday ale. It's nice. It must be nice. It's real nice. <laughs> uh, yeah, the offensive line was interesting, Phil. Luke Wattenberg, uh, a tough go of it. A rookie making his first start and not played much before. Has to deal with Chris Jones. I mean, it's going to be hard for any player, but he gave up two sacks pretty quickly. The Broncos went away from him, started rotating in Quinn Bailey and Atani Muti. And really, it was interesting because they found success on one drive with Muti in there and didn't leave him in. They put Bailey in. They have success with Bailey. They don't leave him in. Makes they, you think. They, keep, they keep rotating. I'll be interested to see moving forward, do they continue that rotation? Do they stick with one guy? Um, but obviously getting some of these young guys' experience at this point in the season – even though you want wins, I, I think it's still important to to give these guys a chance. Eric, if uh, the left guard position was a type of door, if it was a type of door, what what type of door would you say that it was? You thought you were gonna got you thought you were gonna get me, but it was a screen door, Phil, because they ran a screen oh. for a sixty six yard touchdown. <laughs> I was gonna say revolving door. I know what you wanted me to say. Okay, that's what I was gonna say because it was just going around. And then you put in a new guy, and it goes around. Was it going around and town? Then, and then one comes out, and one goes in. That's well, what I would say that it was. But a screen door, that was nice too, huh? That was nice. Uh, uh, that was a nice play call, huh? It worked out perfectly. Uh, the blitz was coming from that side. Russ got it over. Got it over those guys. And Marlon Mack took care of the rest. Are you going to make it till 6.15? Where's my guy, Jake Hedge? 
is my guy, Jake Hedge. Brandon Walker, hey, fellas. My guy, Josie, put on a show. Do you think this team has found a groove here late in the season? Let's talk about Josie a little bit. Let's do it. You all right? Yeah. You with me? You keeping up? <laughs> I'm ready. Uh, uh, Josie has been playing really well recently. Yes. Big hits, check. Interceptions, check. Leading tackler, check. What what can't this guy do? Man, you love Josie Jewel, huh? I am. <laughs> I don't know. Some of that granola he's got going in Iowa. Yeah. I don't know if you know this, but I went to his home. <laughs> Man, I'm worried about you. Yeah. Here, I'll, I'll say some football things here for a well, second. I went to his hometown. This, uh, we did a back home feature on him. <laughs> How'd that go? Really nice. Really nice. Yeah, yeah Josie, Josie's been playing some really good football. Uh, I think people view him kind of as like a, a downhill tackler in the run game. The instincts he showed on those two interceptions, really good. Showed the film study that he's done. Uh he was one of the better players on this Broncos defense before he got injured last year. I thought a really good move to re-sign him, and he's proved that correct this year. He and Alex Singleton, who Alex Singleton comes in as maybe a, a special teams contributor, you know, ideally he ends up starting. They've been really good together. I think they've got their own nickname now. What is it? I think it's the Bash Bros. Bash what, Bros? Is what okay. Justin Simmons said. They bash people. I like that. Yeah. That's like a, a lot of times like baseball players. Like they Super call Smash, bash but Bash. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe yeah. they should be the Super Bash Bros. Super Bash Bros. Could be copyrighted. That could be a problem, yeah. Um, but, yeah, Josie's been really good. And I think with him, the fact that after the game he said, you know, I'd rather win than have those two interceptions shows the type of player he is, shows why people like our, friend, like our friend Brandon – like Josie so much. He's always been like that. I think a three-time captain at Iowa. Is it three? I think three. Dang, it might have been three. Confirmed. It could be three. Uh, ben Swanson, uh, my fact check. It's three. Said, How many times was Josie Jewell a captain at Iowa? Uh, Swanson's trying to tell me here that uh, Alex Singleton is the leading tackler for the season. But what I meant was that Josie Jewell led the team in tackles yesterday. With a, Ted. Yeah, a classic way to say that. Ted, he's a, he led the team in tackles yeah. yesterday, which is all I care about. Right. Yes, sir. yes One sir. game at a time. One game at a time. It's a week-by-week week type of thing, Eric. Three. Three-time captain? Or okay, or okay captain. Yeah, I don't know what that was. I think three. Mark Horning says, seems like Phil's beer is one of those imperial the high alcohol yeah. ones. It's a quad IPA. It's because <laughs> it's because it comes out of fancy glass like this. Yeah, it's fancy. It's actually yeah. not. That's just bourbon. I said <laughs> you have some, some yeah. Breckenridge bourbon. Just drinking said, it like Give a me beer. The fancy one and fill it up. <laughs> that's what I said. Uh, Jake Hedge, those shots are kicking in now. They're hitting. Jake. Jake seems like a fun guy. Where's he been before? Tommy Lee. Tommy Lee's taking us down. He says, can we talk about the pick six? The pick six, oh. the Russ pick six. Sure. Let's just be negative. We can take a trip to – hold on, Phil. Pull out the map. Negative town. Looks like we take a left here to negative town. Yeah. It's a town. It's not really a city. No. It's just a town. Population less than it was yesterday. Yes, it was. Ooh, good good point. <laughs> yeah, good point. The, I think that was just a heck of a play by Gay there. Yeah, I, I will say – even if Russ gets that throw off to Brandon Johnson, it's not a first down. He's yeah. getting hit in the backfield, and so I don't know if that was a play call where you're just hoping to get have him alone if Brandon Johnson is supposed to run to the sticks and then turn or, or what the issue there was, but that wasn't going to work regardless. Obviously, the way it happened was the worst possible outcome, but it, the Broncos were not getting a first down there anyway. Yeah. Uh, it, it does seem like every time the Broncos play the Chiefs, they have, like, one play that's like kind of like that. You know? it's a good point. You want to name some of them? I mean, uh, the fumble. Uh, last year, Melvin. Last year, Melvin. And then that got returned. That was, of course, Nick Bolton, Drew Locke's college Nick teammate. Nick Bolton, the Mizzou. Mizzou. 
Yes. M I Z. Uh, Daniel Sorensen, I think, has like 37 pick sixes yeah. against the Broncos. Good thing that guy's not there anymore. A good huh? thing. Yeah. They found somebody else. Yeah, he saved his best for the Broncos. Tyron Matthew, of course. Some uh, big pass breakups. I mean, it's, uh, Joe Flacco really was strip sacked for a this. touchdown. Tyree Kill had some punt returns for touchdowns. I mean, it's been tough. Eric, uh, do you think that yesterday's performance, though, should that be encouraging for the Broncos as they get set to face the Chiefs here again in a couple of weeks? Yeah, I mean, I, I think the goal when you go to Arrowhead should be to win the football game. And I think yeah. I think you can realistically look at it and say they can win this. If we play the way we did after the first quarter, because not only was it the offense, Phil, but the defense really did not play well in the beginning of the game. They allowed scores on four consecutive drives to let the Chiefs go up 20 to nothing. So the Broncos were going to be in that hole no matter what the offense said. You know, they – even if the offense scores every possession, you're still going to have given up 20 points. A- after um, the pick six, things really changed. Mahomes threw one more touchdown through three picks. His passer rating dropped substantially. So I think if you're the Broncos, you look at this and you say, hey, we can play with this team. We can beat this team. Obviously, doing it in Arrowhead would be, I think, Russell Wilson. Or I guess that game's not in December, huh? Fact check, no, it's not. Uh, I think it's New January. Year's Day. Yeah, January. So that That's gets rid of the stat, I was going to say. But uh, hard to win there, obviously, late in the season. But I, I do think when you when you look at this, especially the way the game went, if it had been a 14-10 to 10 game, I think you'd still worry, hey, our, our plan of going out and getting Russ so that we can compete with Patrick Mahomes, it's still not looking great. The way that things went yesterday, I think you st- you still believe you can go toe to toe with Patrick Mahomes. Mm. You can play their game and beat them because I think that's the important thing in the NFL. Phil, you've got to be able to play a bunch of different styles of football to play well. And the Broncos yep. have shown the ability to play low scoring games, and you know you'd like to see them pull more of them out. But they've shown the ability to, to be in those games. You haven't seen the high scoring one yet, and so to see them yesterday be able to to stay in that football game. Now, Phil, it does say where we are at this season that we are talking so glowingly about a loss instead of yeah. a win. And it should be noted the Broncos have now lost, what, 9 of 10? Well, oh, in the season, yeah. yeah. Of course, four in a row, the win against Jacksonville, and then now five in a row. So things are not. That's a tough stretch. You've got to temper everything because the wins have not followed. But The results. Um, but I think if you look at this game, you say, okay, we have a reason to believe that, yeah, Russ can – can do this against Patrick Mahomes. All right. Here's a nice little controversial question that we were talking about in the office, Eric. Did Russell Wilson outplay Patrick Mahomes yeah, yesterday? Absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, Patrick Mahomes is going to have the highlight plays, and it's fun to go on ESPN and look and see the underhand toss or the spin around in the red zone and the who caught that last one in the red zone. I don't know who got that in the back. But, uh, I was just screaming. I think it was Juju. Uh, yeah, I that was Juju. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah and uh, yeah, so it it's fun Juju. to watch those plays. But also I think the fact that Russ used his legs. He obviously had a higher quarterback rating, did not throw the three interceptions. I mean, I think if you looked at that performance from Patrick Mahomes before the game, you probably would have taken that and just rolled the dice with whatever happened. I, I do think Russ showed that he can outplay him. Now, granted – it's only the third time ever that Patrick Mahomes has thrown three picks. He's not often going to make those mistakes, so it hurts that the Broncos didn't take advantage. Yeah, but but Russ did just as much as Mahomes, and and I think you could argue more. Uh, we talked a lot about Josie Jules' two interceptions, but how about uh, PS2 getting on the board? Yeah, glad for him. He's nice. Obviously, it's got to be frustrating to play as well as you have and not have a pick. Um, and what a heck of a play! He goes down, doesn't look like it's a pick, but. Gets his wrist under there, makes a play, and he admitted after the, he admitted after the game he kind of chuckled and said, "Man, I've been I've been waiting on that. I've wanted that for a while now." So happy for PS2 that he got an interception. That's two against uh, Pat. Fact check, yes. For Pat, true. Pat for Pat. Ooh. Two interceptions. Patrick Sertan, the second pick oh. of Mahomes. Ooh. Hey. How's that? Maybe we need a new headline for the uh, for that show. For the show, yeah, we can it update could be it. Nice, could be nice. Uh, how about the uh, Marlon Mack play? That was a thing of beauty. This team really needed one like that. That question from Mark Horning. Yeah, we talked about that a little bit. I, I think that 
it was a great call. Chiefs were bringing pressure, especially from their secondary. The fact that you were able to to recognize that, Clint Kubiak calls that screen play. Perfection. It, it plays to Marlon Mack's strength. Perfection. It plays to Quinn Miner's strengths to get out there and be able to attack downfield. And then just a great individual individual effort from Marlon to be able to find the end zone. And Phil, I'll tell you what, I know you were down you tell me. at UCL Training Center prepping for Broncos postgame live. With Todd Davis and Nick Ferguson. Yep, but that place was rocking. Oh, yeah. When the Broncos closed it to 27-21, people started looking around like, huh? is this really happening? Yeah. Then Swanson was tweeting Ted Lasso gifts. I mean, it was just, it was wild. Yeah. That's uh, the excitement that Broncos country needed that. They, they needed did. a little bit of that juice. Uh, Eric, uh, yeah, that was great. You think Marlon Mack is around uh, next year? What do, you, what do you think the long-term plans are here for Marlon Mack? I don't know what with him particularly. Obviously, guy they signed off a practice squad earlier this year. You think given that they signed Chase Edmonds, or excuse me, traded for Chase Edmonds, they'd give him a look. Um, but, but this running back room is definitely an area the Broncos are going to have to address. Yeah. Um, I think Latavius Murray has shown you a lot that maybe he could be a guy you want to bring back, but we'll see if Javante Williams is ready for the season. He's dealing with a really serious knee injury, um, and the Broncos will have to figure, kind of reshape that room because now Mike Boone is back out. This this room has just not caught a break. Of all the groups this year, it's running back has suffered more than any. I think. Yeah, yeah, it definitely. I mean, it was. Uh, it's been pieced together. With yes. some duct tape, a little bit of tin foil, but they've yeah, they've held together so far. Remind me not to have you repair anything for me if you're using tin foil. Yeah, I bring tin foil with me. Yeah. It's in my tool belt. <laughs> Got to be ready for anything here. Uh, you know, uh, Benny Boy, yeah. he makes this thing happen. Uh, he says that the uh, when the Broncos are playing the Chiefs, okay. The Chiefs' defense has scored a touchdown in four of the last five games. Matchups. Wow. Defensive touchdown, four of the last five games. And at least the last two were one possession games. Yeah. So you think, okay, well, we get rid of that. It makes you think. You win. It makes you the think. The Broncos' offense outscored the Chiefs' offense yesterday. Oh. Now, granted, in the fourth quarter, the Chiefs are trying to run the clock out. They're not... They're not pushing it, but... Different kind of game. But that's a fact. That is a fact. I do also think that even though Mahomes said that they were still trying to push or Andy Reid said they were trying to push, the game has just a different feel when it's 27 nothing. I mean, regardless of what you want to say, that is a different t- kind of a game. So bad to be leading by more points. No, no, good. Good. Good to get the lead. But the tone of the game, the flow of the game... The character of the game, it changes. So, uh, say what you will about that. Uh, and then uh, Jake Hedge, another comment here. Uh, don't play Russ. We need him healthy for next year. For this offense, uh, he can get better. He can get better. I, so, there is a sort of yeah. a thought there with four games left to go. The Broncos, they don't have much to play. Uh, uh Oh, and also to be healthy over the off season too. That's what Jake uh, Jake wants to say. Yeah, I think there's something to that. Um, you want to be healthy in the off season. But <laughs> it's critical. It is nice. I would I would season. say though that you know you're trying to continue to earn respect in this locker room. These guys are out there battling. They're putting their bodies on the line. If you're healthy enough to play, and, play. and Russ will do this, I, you should play. Yeah. I, I agree, Eric. I, I do think that if you're healthy enough, you should go play. And you got to build momentum. I mean, it's not like things are going great on the offensive side of the football and you're not going to make the playoffs. I mean, every rep here matters. You've got to find a way to, to get some consistency. What do you think? What, do, what about that same thing if you apply that to Randy Gregory? You think it's a, a, a different situation there? Or do you think that – because Russ, he's got to build this kind of chemistry and this belief and, like, uh, continue the momentum here that they started yesterday. But a guy like Randy Gregory, n- that's not really part of the equation. So what do you think there? Yeah, and it's a it's a more physical position, obviously. He's a guy that's dealt with some injuries. Um, listen, Randy Gregory was perhaps the Broncos' best defender through the first four weeks of the year, and that's including Pat Sertan. He made, he made all sorts of plays and was really good, and that was a big loss. 
I do think that you've got to kind of look at it and say, you know, what what's the reward here that Randy comes back and plays well and you, you know, you get a sense for what he is. I think you know what Rand, how good Randy Gregory can be. Yeah. The, the downside is that he comes back and he aggravates something that yeah. he's been dealing with and then all of a sudden all offseason he's got to now rehab again. Again, I know that guys want to be out there battling with their teammates, but I think if you're the Broncos, you got to just consider, hey, we're not in it. There's no real value at this point to winning football games other than you know, maybe maybe building a little bit of momentum. we got to keep Randy Gregory healthy for next year. I would not play Randy again this yeah. season. Especially considering their past, too. I mean, Randy's had course, some yeah, issues he's, here. And for the most part, uh, Russ has been healthy for the majority of his career, so... Eric, it's about that time, I think. It is. We uh, want to thank all of our commenters on YouTube. That was a good show today. Really good. Jake Hedge. You held it together. Jake Hedge has some good uh, comments there. Let me go ahead and finish this guy up. Chuck, Chuck. Thank you very much. It's hitting. It's hitting, Eric. Uh, but, yes, I think that it's time to wrap up the show here. Had a very nice show here at Breckenridge Brewery's Farm Home. That's right. It's a farm home for the holidays. That's really nice. It's packed in here tonight, I'll tell you it what. It is. It's hopping. A lot of people. You were signing some autographs out front. That's right. You know, you signed a baby's security. forehead? We had to have some security here for you because, of course, uh, the masks deal. were screaming. Big deal. And uh, the audio wouldn't be right. <laughs> right. So uh, we're here every Monday from 530, exactly 530, to about 615. And we're also live on the Broncos YouTube page. A great place to be. We'll be back on Thursday for our regular program. We'll be looking ahead to a a matchup here against the Cardinals. They're playing, of course, right now Monday Night Football. Yeah, it looks like Kyler Murray just got hurt. We'll have to uh, monitor that situation. Just to see what happened. We've got some breaking news here from Eric Dalala. I'm just watching the TV. Oh, yeah, the Manning cast. Yeah. That's how we know when to get off. Peyton called us, and he said, said, guys, you got to wrap up. Yeah, it's time to wrap Take up. it away from the viewership. I think Joe Burrow is joining him tonight. Yep. They got they got a nice lineup. Let's just see. He was going to join us, but then we said, Pete, you can have him. You can have him. Yeah, Burrow was going to join us. Yeah. Even though the Broncos don't play him this year. No, he just, just likes us. Yeah. Yeah. He's a, he's a part of NZ Nation. So we'll be back on Thursday talking about uh, the matchup against Arizona coming up on Sunday. Uh, a big one for the Broncos just to see if they can build off this game against the Chiefs. So... That's going to do it for us. Uh, a couple of shout-outs here, Eric. Uh, maybe Jill, Ike, and Amanda Gerlach. Critical send, pieces to our team. We send our uh, our wishes our to Amanda warmest she's regards. she's battling back. That's true. She's battling back here. And then, of course, Benny, Benny Boy. Benny Boo. Benny Boo Boo. He's behind the scenes. He makes sure that uh, this show is accurate. That's right. Whatever we say here, you could just go ahead and say that's a fact. What do you think of his jean jacket? The jean jacket, you know, I like. Sometimes I like a jean jacket, but not when it exactly matches the jeans that he's wearing. Yeah, Ben Ben's kind of doing the Canadian full, tuxedo, yeah, yeah, yeah. the way that Josie and Alex Singleton did earlier in the year. Yeah, yeah. And I thought the cowboy hat was a little bit much. No, but just when he, we, we of course have not seen him without a beard in a long time. But just yeah. the mustache, I think, is a nice look. Yeah, yeah. The fact that he shaved his entire face except the mustache. He's got the cowboy hat. You know, it's. It's something he said he was trying out for the holidays. He looks taller than his normal 6'2". Yeah, exactly. Well, the cowboy boots will do that. That's true. The, a nice heel for Ben That's Swanson right. Tonight. Benny Boo Boo. Uh, but that that will do it for us, uh, for Eric. Da- oh, did you want to say something else? Kyler's getting carted off the field. Oh, more updates. More news updates. Here. More updates. So we'll have to see. Maybe uh, the, the Cardinals will be without Thursday Kyler could Murray. be wild. Could be. The show. Yeah, we might have to just. All right, let's yeah, get out of here before something else happens. Yeah, exactly. So that's going to do it for us. For Eric Dahl, I am Phil Milani. You've been listening to The, the Neutral, Neutral Zone. Zone.